deep left. That might send the Yankees to the World Series. For the hero in game seven. Clemens has set a major league record for strikeouts in a game. Derek Jeter with one of the most unbelievable plays you will ever see by a short stop. Red Sox fans have longed to hear it. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. Welcome back to Fanbase, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports. John Senecal here, Brian Shackman. This is a World Series edition of Fanbase. And we gotta, if we're talking about the World Series, we got to bring up a person that's going to haunt the Red Sox for the next 12, 10, 13 years, depending on how good he is at the back end of his career, and that's Mookie Betts. Yeah, I mean, it won't be the curse of the Bambino, but you never, you never know. I mean, everyone's, the whole country seems to be talking about Mookie Betts. And what's funny is that... I, I have a lot of things. Someone's to... talking about a West Coast baseball player. It's amazing. <laughs> it's because it's because the East Coast was in love with him first. Um, what are the, his line in Game One was two for four, uh, an RBI, uh, two two runs scored, a K and a walk, and he stole two bases. And I guess you got that, some tacos. The, <laughs> tacos. If you if you had to register mm-hmm. though, and I guess against the Dodgers in eighteen, he got ta- he Wait won a minute, people you gotta taco. register. Like you had to like sign up for the taco. Oh uh, my offer. god, you can't just roll in. I there don't think so. You used I, to be able to just roll in I there. I know, again. but that's they gave way too many tacos. Right, I think well, that's COVID screwing something else up again. But you know what? It, it brings up. You know, he just had a perfect night. They try to say, like, only only Willie Mays had scored two runs, stole two bases, and hit a home run, like, in a World Series game. They could try to come up with it these records. Like, it seems like, like anybody so could do random, that. so random, you know, but it's so random. I the, feel like Carlos Correa could cheat his way to that. But the funny thing about Betts, and I, there's two layers to it. A, his teammates in L.A., they love him. Yes. And they just, there's something about him, and, you know, one of my friends... He's electric. Well, but, but it's funny, as a human being, like uh, Latoya Edwards, who I work with uh, New England Cable News for years, she, in, she got to know Mookie's mom. And the, the, he sp- she spent time with both the mom and Mookie early in his career. And, like, he, he's... Didn't he live with his mother yeah, for, like, a long time? Or yeah, something? and he's a grounded, like, real human being. He comes across maybe as a little bit elusive because he's... It's actually kind of humility sometimes, but he's kind of a quiet, private person. But he's a good person. So you take the fact that he's a legitimately good person, he... He has a competitive fire that you can't underestimate. Like, no. he made a couple of those catches in the NLCS, and he came off the wall just fired up. Fired up. And, and, he, and he's so calm about it. Like, like, two of those catches, it was like he knew as soon as that ball was in the air, he was going to catch it. Yeah. The one where he came off the wall, like, ah, I think he was like, damn, dude, that, that was a great catch. That could have But the other two, right. he was like... You know, the other one, he was like, got it. But then the shoestring one, I was insane. He's well, just, just a, not just the shoestring catch, but to come throw. up with a throw to throw the and, guy and, out and guy, Well, yeah, and he would have been out by a mile if he got his hand on the ball. And he throws, like, you know, from deep, like, shallow right field, flips it, and he's just an amazing athlete. So, But here's the thing about him as a player, because in the NLCS, everyone made a big deal about the defense because he didn't hit it all. Right. And then he goes into game one of the World Series, and he gets on base, and then you are reminded of what he does. Yep. And you know what it's like? And Because what we talk about, we all know Mookie was traded to the Dodgers and signed this $400 million deal. We can talk about how the Red Sox will regret that forever. But at his best, Ellsbury was very similar, Jacoby Ellsbury. Yeah. Because when he's when Ellsbury at his peak was you on get base, on and change the game. You the pitcher can't not think about right. him all the time. Yep. And that's the same with Betts. But the one difference between Ellsbury and Betts, Betts is like the smartest base runner you'll ever see. Like if there's a play on first where like it, they made a fielder's choice at third and the guy's just casually, he'll He'll, he won't even stop. He'll run straight to second and right. take the base. Like, he steals bases, not just stealing them. And Ellsbury's them. pulling a hammy. Yeah, or Ellsbury. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ellsbury got a hurt to steal a second. But those are the things, like his baseball IQ that we talk about with, like, the Rico Bronias and the Bobby Dickersons of the world. Mookie's baseball IQ is above almost it's everybody. It's the intangibles, really. and that's what you're paying for, though, too, with him. Like, you can dole out all these contracts you want to these big, big so-called, you know, elite athletes, but... Very seldom do you get the guy, like the LeBron, the Jordan, the, you know, the Jeter, those kind of guys that just have the it factor. And Mookie's got it. He's just got it. So here's the question, though. Obviously, the Red Sox thought they didn't want to sign him long term because those 10-year deals end up being an albatross. And I think that the Dodgers made, basically, if they can get one or two World Series out of it, it's worth it even if he can't do anything in the last three years of the deal. Now, they, they ship him off. Uh, and it's obviously, anytime you trade a player like that, everyone's going to ridicule you forever. Um, you obviously, from a Yankee fan, think it was a terrible decision? 
I would have loved to seen him on the Yankees. I mean, Jesus, I, mean, I, would, I would love it. I, I was saying he's been one of the best ba- players in baseball for like the last okay. four years. So let me ask you, who, so I think a Trout, but on the Yankees, think of like Stanton, Judge. Is there anybody who you would take over? A Mookie Betts because he doesn't on have those Yankees. statistics. No, in, in, oh, in on general. the Yankees and in general. In both. general, I mean, well, you look at. See, I'm not. A, I'm not. I don't like. I'm not a big fan of like Ronald Acuna, but like someone like him who's younger, who's going to produce for years to come. He's built right. Like Mookie's built good. He's built for the long term. He's right. not a big dude. He's not going to put on a ton of weight. Right. As long as he doesn't get Tony Gwynn and get all like you know big and chunky, he, won't. he shouldn't because it's different now. Um, it's the investments there, but I mean, I mean, age-wise, I'd say you know like Trout. I mean, you can't ever knock Trout down. He's he's. I, so you take Trout over over Betts. I feel, not a winner. Not a winner. Maybe competitive, but like Mookie literally elevates everybody around yeah, him. I feel bad for Trout, but I think he kind of likes his hanging out there for some reason. But as far as age comparison, I would say you know Trout and Mookie are right there. They're the two best players in baseball. But I, I would I, honestly, you I take think, Okuna over Betts because he's younger. I mean, he's younger, but I'm not a big fan of him. You know, well, like you the, don't know the, his intangibles. The, 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 uh, exactly. Maybe he doesn't have any other than six chains around his neck. <laughs> you know? I mean, who knows? I mean, Betts is the guy, dude. He is the guy. Yeah, it was just incredible to watch. I, I like seeing how much attention he's getting because I know from, from covering him and watching him in Boston how sort of he's the, he's the package. And when you hear, like, Cody Bellinger talk about how they literally are quoted saying, I love playing with Mookie Betts. I just, you don't see that kind of commentary from these guys in this era because it's about them and they don't but he he had that same environment with uh ben Attendi and jbj in the outfield they Maybe became this sort of Red team Sox. what that they, that don't, they have don't have that person they don't have that person to gel them all a together. spiritual leader yeah. i mean i think that's 100 percent true now i also i don't begrudge them not, for not wanting to pay the 400 million i i don't know what the red sox deal is but i i do think that uh bets probably didn't love being in Boston. Yeah, we, and I think that's one of the subtle things. Like, I, maybe he wasn't going to sign no matter what. I don't know. I mean, the Red Sox overpaid. Literally, David Price never wanted to come to Boston. He was fine to go to St. Louis. He was going to go to St. Louis. And yeah. then, you know what? The, the Red Sox offered $30 million more, and right. his agent said, you can't say no to this. And so... <laughs> he didn't want to be there at all. <laughs> no, no, it's true, though. Price it never is. wanted to be in Boston. No. He never did. And hey, so he's, he's sitting at home watching the Dodgers play right now. I know. I wonder how he feels oh, man, sitting it out. Somehow he'll get a slice of that pie you know they will they'll kick him something on the back and didn't pay one game for him and they'll get a ring out of it. but it's pretty interesting that he if they do win which i do think that they will i think that the the dodgers will roll in this series if they do win how price feels and how you view him right because i mean he had a really good series for the red sox and had some redemption uh when they won it uh, but at, at the same time he doesn't have a it's great weird reputation. though how these guys just kind of disappear like i like the other day they showed like a picture of him on like, I don't know. I don't even know what it was. Like, picture him and his daughter or something watching the game. And I was like, oh, my God. You hadn't even right. thought about him. I was like, David Price. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And they yeah. didn't miss a beat. You know, John Senecal, Brian Shackman here, a fan base, a deep diver in the greatest rivalry in sports. The other thing we want to do today is, is as we're in the World Series, and the Yankees have won 26 of them. I think the Red Sox is eight or nine. I don't even know. But 27. I know, the Yankees I, have won. 27, whatever. Um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, for us, it's uh, 04, 07, 13, and 18. Uh, and you guys haven't won since what, 90? 2009. Okay. And then before that it was? Uh, 2000. Okay. So it's two in this century yeah. for the Yankees and four for the Red Sox. Yeah. Just this century has got a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much longer it will be. But we thought we would tell, not like our greatest sort of baseball moments uh, in our memories of, of the World Series, because I went to all four of the Red Sox, and I even went to uh, I went to the 03 oh, Yankees. We'll talk about. Me. I went to all let's <laughs> let's talk about one or two of your greatest memories of the World Series as it relates to the Yankees. You will alternate. You you do one, I'll do one. Okay. You do one, I do one. All right. So I, obviously, I'm I was too young in '81 um, to remember. So my, the, the first real World Series I remember is '96. And I'm in college. One of the best teams ever, right? They were actually they they were they didn't win a ton of games. I mean, they, they won the AL East, but they played the Braves, who were like the juggernaut that right. year. And no, they weren't going to win. They weren't supposed to win. Right. The, the Braves had won in '95. It was yep. their only title. Yep. And they, but the Yankees were not supposed to win. Um, but they wound up winning. And then you know the game had a lot of great highlights. Andrew Jones was big. Yankees were down up in front. But the best part, um, I'm in college and I'm living with. Um, some football players and one <laughs> bunch of knuckleheads. Yeah, one of the dudes is like straight up hardcore Yankee fan. Like he's this big heavy set guy, Mike Gibson. And he 
um, is from New York, like the city, just, just north of the city, I think. I don't know. I can't remember what town. But huge Yankees fan. So the Yankees go down 0-2 in the series, and they, they're outscored 16-1. to I don't remember that. 16-1 to in the first two games. Dude goes out and like burns like his Yankee hat, Yankee jersey <laughs> out front. We we didn't we weren't on campus, not on campus. Right. Um, we lived off campus, but I remember like my buddy was up and we were just like, "What the hell? Like this is crazy. This guy's out and of John, his mind." And John was like, "I paid ten bucks for the shirt. I'm not, I'm not burning." <laughs> and I'm a big Yankees fan, but this guy, I was like, "Holy cow, this guy is hardcore." But then again, you know, the Yankees come back and they win it, so he might, <laughs> he felt like such a jackass. That's but, really funny. Though. But that's uh, that's my 1996 uh, Yankees World Series story. I'm gonna I'm gonna go name drop on this first one because. Uh, I took a job at MSNBC for Morning Joe in the spring of 2013. And so Morning Joe Scarborough is a huge Red Sox fan. And, uh, and Mike Barnacle was on the staff, obviously the longtime Boston Globe columnist. And uh, I, was, uh, I was just the lowest guy on the food chain. But when the Red Sox made the World Series, they nobody, were... Nobody cared. None of those no, old dinosaurs but, but wanted so, to go. So Joe Scarborough <laughs> convinced Steve Ratner, a really wealthy wealthy guy to take his private jet to Boston for nice for I, I don't know if it was the deciding game or it came five well, where are you six. flying from um I think New York to Boston I, yeah Teterboro Airport oh, to that's, Boston right, that's a short hop but that's no still fun. it's better than driving yeah it's so right I, I had never you I had, take the Acela <laughs> I have ne- I had never flown in a private jet before so so we take a private jet and Joe Scarborough who makes a lot of money they set us up at the Commonwealth Hotel we went to Eastern Standard we are in the private jet. jet are you in Steve Ratner is his name. He's a he's just a wealthy guy who goes on Morning Joe a lot. He's a, like a he was a he's uh, a monopoly man. He's just he's made a lot of money in yeah. finance. And then it was Mike Barnacle and it was Joe Scarborough and we had Phil Griffin, the president of uh, of MSNBC, and Sam Stein, who who was a White House uh, correspondent at the time. It was a huge Red Sox fan. At some point, I'm sure like a bunch of those people came across in an email chain. Through my, through my email at some point. Probably, yeah. yeah. Ab- no, there's no doubt Senior about it. Senior leadership change. <laughs> yeah. But it was... Squ- I was We'd like, like to announce that five people have disappeared in a black car. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, this is what it was. And, I, I, and, and we go in there, and, uh, and what we were going to do is we were going to do the show from the field yep. the next morning. And so we with this whole game. I don't even remember the game. I just remember it just... I was... For me, I was quiet. I was sort of in awe of the whole thing, and I I was new, and I didn't want to like make anybody mad or say something stupid. Did you guys drink on the plane? Um, I th- I think I think we you may can't have. go well, on. A, like Joe Scarborough, I don't think he had. You he can't had go on any. a private jet and not have I, a drink. I took whatever they gave me. <laughs> you know, like if they gave me peanuts, I ate you peanuts. Have a fresca. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I was in like a captain's chair, and then we like like Eastern Standard was like an hour and a half wait, and Scarborough walks right in, and we get a table of like. 10. It was amazing. It was amazing. But the next morning was it. They they clinched the World Series, and because the ownership group of the Red Sox really liked the show, they let us set up shop on the field. And I don't know what is it like at Yankee Stadium, but at Fenway they don't like anybody touching the grass but the players. Yeah. And we literally, I don't know if they didn't know or the ownership said they let them do what they want. Yeah. But we went everywhere we wanted. We went into the monster to check out the do whatever you wanted. We actually remember the tor- the Tory Hunter. Um, non-catch in the ALCS yeah. when his butt was in the air and the yeah. cop was like this. Yep. And so we won one commercial break. Sam Stein and I, we were mic'd up. We ran out to the fence. Every, it, he went into the bullpen. I, actually, and I, I went I, over the thing with my, my, my ass in the air. I remember watching this. I think, and, yeah. and we recreated it. Was, it was the most incredible 24 hours. And not so much for the game, but the fact that we could do this TV show on the field and we could go wherever we want. Like yeah. I literally got to run on the field. It's crazy, and, and that and that wasn't that long ago. Like that's 2013, right. like, and you got that access. Now I remember going to the 2000 Subway Series when I was working for NBC Connecticut as a photographer. So pre 9/11. Pre 9/11, right? And back when you could do like anything, like so, like you know, we was, oh yeah, well this is NBC. You know, we want to get some passes to the World Series. The next thing you know, you got them. You got them. You know, you got four passes to the World Series or whatever. Um, but you could do that back then. But I was actually down there legit. You know, there were some other people that weren't legit, but whatever. Right. But they, you know, they had passes, so they are legit. <clears throat> but they weren't working. Uh, <laughs> Acting like they were working. Sure. Yeah. There's tons of journalists, by the way, who get their credentials, have nothing to do work-wise, and go either A, to watch it, or B, say that they went there. Yeah. I've done it a lot. It's great. It's awesome. Especially when you have a monitor in front of you, and you can watch it, and you be right. like, watch it, and look over, and be like, oh, that pitch was a strike. Right. Watch the game live. So anyways, we're at the 2000 World Series. You know, we're... Um, you we're with Kevin game- Nathan? Uh, I believe no. You know, I think I was Holder. Sweet Lou Holder. Yeah, nice. Yep. Uh, from the bo- he was going to Boogie Down Bronx. You know. <laughs> um, so game one, um, 
believe the Yankees won. I don't, I can't remember. But game two is the big one, right? So we do all the pregame stuff, and we're you know doing the live shots, blah 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 blah. From the field, live shot from the field. I think we did live shots from the field. Yeah, yeah. like but I think we like like hijacked uh, like uh, uh, WMC. Yeah. Um, so they're all fawning over Beck. You know, all the, all, he's over there fawning over him, and I'm just sitting there waiting to get on so I can right. go watch the game. Right. Anyway, so um, that we get all done with that, and uh, the scrub seats. For that time, we're in the upper deck, uh, left field line. But they were still good seats because they actually like built like uh, wood into it, so you actually had like a, a tabletop. Tabletop. Yep. So they took out like the, the front row of each right. section. So it actually hurt them by taking out the fans, but it was kind of cool because you still had a monitor. So I remember going up there and we're watching. And game two is a game where Roy did up. Clemens throws the bat at Piazza. Oh, yeah, the broken bat. The broken bat at Piazza. And he's like, oh, I thought it was the ball. Like, yeah. okay, <laughs> I thought it was the ball. OJ thought it was someone else too, yeah. right? <laughs> I thought it was a cougar. I thought it was the ball. I just reacted and threw it. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I remember sitting up there, and I remember looking over to, to my uh, friend that's standing there, and I'm like, did he just throw the bat I remember that. at him? And he's like, yeah, I think he just threw the bat at him. Like, I was just in awe. Did he um, get a check? He didn't get a check, no, did he? No, of course not. I remember that with Piazza. It was like everyone was like, what, what was that? Yeah. Um, but it this- was so weird. And then you watched it back on TV and you would just realize how much like weird it is. And like he had to have been juiced up. Yeah. Like who, like, he, or just, what normal person is that? Like, Well, the adrenaline, I don't think you and I can even, forget about the fact that maybe it was, there was a med- medically induced element to it, just the adrenaline of the moment, yeah. right? I mean, and, and, the, and the, the, just the, the, the rivalry, the intensity. Um, yeah, but, Piazza's in the Hall of Fame and Clemens will never get in. You don't think he'll ever get in? No. No, you know why? Because he said it in his first thing. He said, you think I give a rat's ass about the Hall of Fame? He said it. He came right out and said it. You think any of those people are going to rem- forget that? I hope not. I mean, I listen. Clemens was a poster on my wall, and and when I was a teenager, so Rocket. I loved, I, I, Roger I, I the Rocket. Him. I had the so poster too. He disappointed me um, a, a great deal, he but he was great without Royd. So I mean, '86 was the greatest. You know what his claim to fame is now going to be? Pitching when he's like 60 at the University right. of like Texas right. in some alumni game. I used to like how he would skip spring training in like the first month of the season and then sign for 22 million. 22 million dollars <laughs> in late June. Yeah, you know. Uh, we got a couple quick last stories here. Uh, mine's really quick. In 03, when I was I I I don't know if I replaced Lou Holder. I don't know if there was anyone in between. No one can replace Lou. Holder. No, I know, but I don't know if I came after him. <laughs> you know, for at NBC 30. But I I went down. I guess Kevin didn't like to do the World Series in New York. But uh, I, I was there for the clinching game against the Marlins in 03. Yep. And I'll never forget being on the field, Carl Pavano, who was a Red Sox draft pick. And I think... Connecticut's own. And Carl I wonder Pavano. if they were... I think he might have been a Red Sox family. I can't remember if they were Yankee family or Red Sox I think they family. Were family. They were a Yankee family. But I remember his mom on the field after they won, she was so jacked up. And like she was just trashing the Yankees. Really? Just like trash it. And then he signed with him. I know. And she was like wearing all the wearing all the gear the next year. It was so funny. But she's sitting there behind him. I wonder plate. how she feels so in her ha- nice car now. So happy. I know she made a lot of money. And just the, you know, the proud mom, yeah. you know, the, t- the tiger mom, so excited and jacked up. And she was just ripping the Yankees to shreds. It was hysterical. The Yankees have bought mama a lot of gifts, I bet. <laughs> I think they have they bought a lot of mamas a, lo- a lot of gifts. Yeah. What's so your last one? All right, so um, 2001 World Series, post 9-11, right after the World Series is postponed. Right. Push back, not postponed, push back. Um, and I go down. We don't get credentials this time. Not as easy. Well, don't security just, is crazy. Don't just make a phone call. Security right. is insane. Like, they're just, they're not letting, like, hardly anybody in there. I right. think, like, WNBC is the only NBC that's in there and network, you know, which is basically WNBC. Um, and the net, and the people that are broadcasting at the time, I think probably was NBC still broadcasting the World Series. Yep. Um, anyways, um, we go down there because we we're doing a story outside the stadium. Got to be live, right? You know, fine. I want to go. It's a World Series, and it was just insane the level of security. Well, Bush is throwing out the first. So pitch. that was the you were there the yeah. night that Bush is. Yeah, Bush is throwing out the first pitch. They had like decoy Marine ones flying in. There was like three or four different ones that flew wow. in. Um, the amount of guys that were there with like long guns was insane and the metal detectors, the dogs, the, it was just nuts. Like you, it, it, it was, it was like you were afraid to point your camera at people. Right. Cause they it was suspicious. It was so much security yeah. and it was like, it was such an uncertain time. Like the, the nation, like, like 
Like if people remember, obviously, like there's people that would be that might watch this that have no clue what, what we're talking about because right. it was you know. So a just while ago. for perspective, after 9/11, we we realized in this country how little we knew about what was around us, how bad our security was. I did the Utah, the Salt Lake Olympics. What was that? It was later, and it was the same thing. Like Crazy. It's, the security was incredible. So the reaction until we figured out what the heck was going on was to lock everything down. Which is pretty sad because we don't do that anymore, except for airplanes. Like we don't even come close to doing that. Right. It is tough to fly. I remember pre 9/11 when I worked at ESPN, we played a game. Of how close to my departure? Oh time my god, dude! Could you I could I walk up 15 airport? minutes beforehand. Yeah, be like, it was it's like catching a greyhound. But to be there that night, like, oh, it's nuts. To be there and. and uh, so you didn't get in. We couldn't get in. Right. We couldn't get in. We, we did the story outside. But just seeing, like, I, you, I was never privy to that ever, ever. I mean, I've covered presidents. You know, like, it, you, the, the level of security was just insane. Like, Was there a sense of, like, because there was that balance of, like, nervousness and intensity, but also, like, p patriotism was sort oh, of at an all-time high. Oh, insane. Patriotism was nuts at the time. And then, and then when Bush came out and threw that strike. It was incredible. It was incredible. It was a great moment for the country. And, you know, it would have been even better if the Yankees' way, way it worked out. It would, really, I mean, won. I almost, like, for me, like, I would have been okay with them winning that. Yeah, I think made, everyone would have been. Yeah. Except Arizona more, fans, which were, like, what, 100 of them? That was the one series where I, I, I came away from that and said, this is why I know that sports like this are, is not fixed. No. Because it, everybody it, really kind of wanted to win. around yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been great for the nation. It would have been great for New York, for certain. I just imagine, like, going back to Bush before we say goodbye, to go up in that moment. Like, a lot of people are critical of him. I didn't love him as a president, but I, now I've, I, I understand him better, and I realize how, how many how bad he, first pitches you've seen. Yeah, but not even, like, a Fauci who throws it, like, but, like, in any moment, like I went and did it in the New Britain, the New Britain Rockcats, and I yeah. was nervous. Like to be in that moment, and it to like be that clutch, clutch, and he nailed it. Nailed I mean, it. it was incredible. Right, it was. It was amazing. And, it, and apparently, he was wearing like a huge flap, uh, bulletproof vest, and yeah, it was pretty amazing. But the security was nuts. It was. I, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget. Yeah, that. well, you can say you were there, and that's really, really. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So. All right, listen. Great episode. It's, it's funny for Mookie Betts. Uh, to the World Series in 2001. Uh, obviously, we are glad you listened and watched this episode. And the Astros didn't make it this year. They couldn't cheat their way to another one. I'm so glad. If they had come back, we would have had a whole different oh kind my of God. episode. Can you imagine? Like, Correa would still be rounding the bases if he hit a home run in the first game of the World Series. Yeah, I just, I'm just... Like, and that was like, he'd still be rounding the bases. I'm, it's good for everybody that they didn't, yeah. they didn't make I it. I hope that team just falls apart and everyone disappears and goes their own way. That's tough because I was always such a big Jose Altuve fan just because of his size. Bad. He sucks. But listen, we want you to listen, watch, and share wherever you enjoy your podcast. We'll be back soon for another episode of Fanbase, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports.